Excellent. Um, first yeah. of all, just just to say <coughs> a, a, a big well done there, Ryan, for, for getting through, because I know how difficult it is to uh, to be tasked with speaking when you've got a, a cough or a cold. So I think, uh, you know, we were all feeling for you, but you did really well. Don't worry about it. Not a problem. Not a problem. Don't apologize. Um, I've got some nice questions in the in the chat in a couple of different places, actually. So I'll um, I'll just take us back. So um, one person asked or two people actually asked about the uh, the scaling. And um, let's see, they've got a couple of different questions. So one of them says, you know, what's the easiest way to actually scale those microservices um, in Azure uh, uh, container apps? Is there a, a really easy well, way to actually, do that? Well, actually, that is automatic. I mean, you can you can do that automatically. Let me just share my screen again. Sorry. Sure. Actually, I forgot to <laughs> to present that. No, no worries. But yeah, actually, that's uh, that scaling part is a is one of the good features of, of working with serverless. So it will automatically your application will automatically scale down and up based on the demands of your uh, of your uh, applications but you can also you can also set different um different um uh, configuration here if you want so there's there's this tail rules um where you can uh, where, where you can set there's also some of uh, some rules that you can uh, you can set here if you want custom i did not try this custom yet but yeah you can also take advantage of this uh, um, configuration. That's great. And yeah, so actually I forgot to show this because of my, my code, but yeah, let me just cancel no, There's this. a lot to cover. There's a lot to cover, no problem. <laughs> and uh, as I have mentioned about the replicas, uh, you can have multiple replicas here. And uh, let me just try that now. As of the moment, the, the revision mode is a single, uh, so, but you can change that to multiple, like this. <clears throat> so, let's say, for example, this revision one is, uh, or you, if you have a new version of your application, mm -hmm. you can just um, let me just finish this. <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, this this will. Yeah. Okay, so I will have this option now to create a, a new rev revision. So let me just try and, and uh, let me just get this. <clears throat> and that revision will also be Listed here. Yeah. So it, yeah. Okay. So as you can see here, it created another revision. So you you have an option now to to uh, select or to to add um, a person to this uh, um, revision. Let's say, for example, here. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I accidentally clicked the inactive. <clears throat> yeah, but as you can see here, there's an option that you can just uh, switch between revisions based on your uh, um, requirements. And you can also have multiple replicas inside that, like what I have. Okay. And 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 by default, you don't need to do something up here. I mean, like like for like what I have mentioned, the scaling part should be automatic when you work with, or when you work with serverless. Yeah, I mean, I guess as well, you know, there's whenever you hear about something being automatic, um, you know, there can be a downside to it, right? But there sounds like there's quite a lot of control there. The fact you can make your own rules. I know the person that was was asking the question. Um, you know, it's sort of saying, was it based on just traffic or load? But it sounds like you can make those rules whatever you like, and so you could you can it, base it, it yeah. On it depends on yeah. It depends on your rules. As I have shown earlier, you can have custom traffic HTTP mm -hmm. request. Yeah, it, it depends on your uh, right there. 
let me just go back there again. I know. Um, ah, sorry, the scaling part. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> Here, so you can set your scale rule depending on your so Q scaling Cost. or HTTP scaling or custom. I did not, I never had a chance to try this yet, but I think this is really worth it. And uh, yeah. That's great. That puts a lot of control in your hands. And I think that's, um, yeah. especially when we're looking at these kinds of level of, yeah. of applications, that's, that's super yeah. important, you know. I also um, want to, to mentioned this uh, different menus here. Actually, I really forgot this. Well, in in uh, you can take advantages of this authentication in Azure Container Apps. You can just uh, uh, you can just there's the this should there should be uh, a toggle button here where you can just enable this authentication process. You can also work with uh, you can also take advantage of these secrets. So you can add delete here. Uh, you can add your um, application secrets here. And um, I have already showed you about this ingress. This is the 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 part where you can control the uh, the visibility of your um, services or container mm. apps. As I have mentioned, a typical scenario you will have this one endpoint um, uh, for your whole container apps environment. Deployment, you can also, uh, if you want to work with your GitHub or Azure DevOps, you can also take advantage of the settings here. It's also like a toggle click bot or a toggle button so that you can just save. You can just, you just need to supply the necessary information. Yeah. Custom. You can do this on the command line as well, right? Because I know you mentioned yes. at the start, didn't you? The command line options, they were nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, you can also, well, most of all of the settings here can be done via CLI, which sometimes nice. is very, very, uh, I'm very easy to do that sometimes, but, <laughs> but in yeah, the just... scenario, I <laughs> you really need to, to use the command instead of just going here directly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know which one I prefer though, because I find you know you do it on the command line, you make a typo, and, and I'm, I'd be feeling very kind of worried that I'm going to just uh, break yeah. everything. So I think for me, I'd go for the UI wherever I can. Um, Ryan, yeah. just one very quick question, just to to finish up, because somebody asked about the um, the the sort of comparison between Kubernetes or Kubernetes and and Azure <coughs> as options and. You know, uh, can you think of any key differences when it comes to using microservices in, in .NET um, between the two? Well, as I have mentioned, if you have this uh, complex uh, requirements, especially if you are dealing with different uh, Kubernetes APIs, or if you want to uh, communicate with different controllers or um, uh, control plane controllers, you cannot do that using or just working with Azure Container Apps because that's it's like this is the uh, uh, K8 or Kubernetes, and this is the this is the Azure Container Apps. So Container Apps is just abstracting all the functionalities of Kubernetes. And if you want to to have a complex scenario, or if you if you have a complex scenario, I highly suggest you work with Kubernetes. Yeah, love it. But that's right. That's right. Explained. But I, but I think most of the uh, let's say a uh, simple project with Azure containers will work better. I mean, you don't need to use Kubernetes, if, especially if you're if you're a developer who really don't know about this K8 stuff, which is very sometimes very scary to 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 deal with. I yeah, just work with container apps or Azure container apps. You just need to click. As I have shown you earlier, it's like, it's a matter of ACD app, ACD deploy, ACD init, or just create, click create and deploy your project. And that's it. Compared yeah. to Kubernetes, which we will we will talk about different nodes, different <laughs> control plane yeah. and master uh, APIs inside of those environments. But yeah, it's it's your preference. 
by the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, it's always, <laughs> always the way, isn't it? Is it? It's always the way you can answer everything in development with, well, it depends, you know, but um, yeah. at the same time, I think that it's good for people to hear the, those differences in terms of, you know, where you would use one as opposed to the other. I know if we had more time, Ryan, because we are out of time, unfortunately, but if I had more time, I was going to ask you about those templates because I think that's where, that's probably where I would go to just sort of start to, to see, you know, I, I like to um, see examples of things before I try and do it myself, even when I don't understand it. And so I think having seen your example and then having seen the templates, I can see there's ways that somebody like me who's never used it could jump in and at least familiarize myself. So, um, so I really appreciate that. Um, just, just to say then, because we are out of time, Ryan, that um, thank you to those that were asking questions in the in the Q and A, and we'll uh, we've seen your your socials on there, and we'll be sure to share those again, yeah. Ryan. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, then then anybody who's got any questions can do a follow up. Um, we also turn some of these talks into blog posts, so we will be kind of reiterating what what it was you said in your discussion um, or in your session in that blog post in the next few days, and hopefully that'll answer some of the questions. So you can see on screen there, um, there's Ryan's socials and. Thank you again, Ryan. Before I abruptly take you off stage, I just want to say a big thank you from us all here for being involved in, in the day. Thank, thank you also for being here, for, for having me here. Bye. Thanks again. And get well soon then, Ryan. Get well soon. Take care. Okay, so we've got around 15 minutes until our next speaker. So um, as promised, I've got some tips and tricks for you. And I'm also going to just give you a, a 